So if you've been dating an avoidant person for a while now, you're probably feeling how you felt in other relationships that you've had in, had in the past. You're feeling like you love your partner. And in other relationships in the past, you had this mutual moment where you and your partner both kind of knew, and you both said it. You said, I love you. They said, I love you. And then you just got in this habit of saying, I love you. But with your avoidant partner, it's just different. They're more slow to open up. They have a harder time being vulnerable. And you feel like you love them, but you are nervous because of their lack of communication that they don't feel the same. You're second guessing yourself because you're not sure that they're on the same page. And worst of all, you might start feeling like you're alone in your own relationship. And so you're just left wondering, can an avoidant person even fall in love? <laughs> what the hell is wrong with them? Well, I am going to explain that in this video. We'll get into it. But first, if you're brand new here, welcome to my channel, Confessions of an Avoidant. My name is Wando, and you can probably guess what this channel is about. Um, I love to talk about attachment from the lens, from the perspective of someone who is avoidant. And feel free to comment if you have any questions or just a comment, feedback, love it. Well, avoidance technically don't love feedback. <laughs> we feel like we're being attacked all the time, which we're not. I'm working on that. Um, I digress. But yeah, leave a comment. If you have a suggestion for a video, let me know in the comments as well. So can avoidance, can we fall in love? The number one thing to always remember about an avoidant is it's not that we can't feel things. It's that we are terrified to death to communicate them. So we feel everything <laughs> that someone who's not avoidant feels. We feel what an anxiously attached person feels. It's just that we're so deathly scared <laughs> of communicating our feelings. And a lot of times this is happening, you know, on a subconscious level. It's not like we're consciously going, oh, I feel this right now, but uh, I'm just not going to say it. I'm scared. It's, it's not necessarily like that. It's just happening all the time as this kind of automated response in life in general, not just with this particular topic. And the reason this happens is because in our childhoods, we were made to feel like we weren't allowed to communicate. We were conditioned this way from our upbringing. In our childhoods, whenever we went to our parents with our feelings, with our needs, we were made to feel shamed, um, pathetic, um, lacking independence. We were scapegoated, guilt-tripped, shunned, pushed away, told to go away. And we just basically lived a life where having feelings was essentially this thing that would always get you in trouble or get you hurt or lead to you being scared, which sucked. <laughs> And so this is happening all day, every day in our childhoods. So it's like, if you go to your parent and you're like, oh, my stomach hurts, you know, they're not gonna really have a lot of sympathy for you. They're just gonna be like, go to the cupboard, there's an aspirin there. <laughs> they basically just want you out of their sight. Um, let's say you need to get a permission slip signed and you go to your parents and you're excited about this trip. And they're like, just put it on the table there. I'll sign it later, I'll look at it later. And you just feel like, okay, D-bag, like I'm just asking for a signature here. And then when they do finally get around to signing the permission slip, they might be giving you a hard time being like, I don't understand why you always come to me for this. Like, ask your mom the next time you need the permission slip signed or, you know, go to dad for these things. Like, why are you always coming to me? Maybe you need a ride somewhere. You want to go meet your friends or all going somewhere and you ask the parent for a ride and they're like, oh god like can't can't one of your friends parents give you a ride and so essentially every single day you're just told to go away whenever you feel excited happy when you need something when you express that you need help with something um when you express how you feel when you express pain it does not matter you're made to feel like you're a nuisance and you're an inconvenience in their day and that is the cycle of neglect and so as a result um, two things happen essentially. You learn that one, you're not safe when you communicate how you feel and you're not safe when you communicate what your needs are. So even though you feel these feelings, 
communicating them can be a bit dangerous for you or it can be very dangerous for, for some people. And then the second thing that we learn as avoidance is feeling the feeling doesn't feel safe because something bad, something negative always came as a result. And so we end up being these people who, despite our feelings, even if they're good, we still have negative um, unconscious and subconscious associations with those feelings. And that's as a result of whenever we had feelings, we were made to feel like we should feel ashamed for having those feelings. We should feel pathetic for having those feelings. We should feel like a nuisance or like a bother for having those feelings. And so not only are we scared to communicate feelings, but then we also have these like awkward negative feelings that come along with having feelings. And so even if we feel like we miss someone, and I experience this all the time, like I'll miss someone so badly, but I will never ever send them a text and say, I miss you. I'm thinking about you. I won't text them and like check in on them and see how they're doing. Cause that feeling of missing someone feels so unsafe for me. And I'm not consciously thinking that this is just happening. Um, almost like against my will <laughs> cause it was against my will as a child. Um, and, and that's what all avoidance are experiencing when we're not so communicative. Um, and the same goes for love. You know, someone can feel like they're in love and not express that they're in love. This happened in my last relationship. Um, my ex, I'm going to talk about this in the next video I make about why we can't say I love you. This is more just about feelings, but neither my ex nor I said I love you to one another, even though when we became friends after our breakup, we both, well, he explained to me that he loved me, which I found interesting. And I've, oh, I've thought about that in the past year. Like, <laughs> like we were just so avoidant. We couldn't say it even though we were feeling it, but I'll elaborate on that more in the next video. But what can you do? How can you handle the situation when you feel like you love someone and you're wondering and you're confused, is this person that I'm dating, are they falling in love with me too? Like, how can you tell that someone's in love with you, even though they're not saying it? And how can you survive <laughs> the kind of neglectful feeling you're experiencing from them not saying it? So there's a few things that I suggest to navigate this situation because I understand it can drive you a thing crazy, <laughs> not knowing where someone stands, but I know it's really hard. I know it can be really hard, but it's super important that if your partner is actually avoidant, acknowledge their actions that reassure you that this person loves you. <laughs> so you can kind of look to your past relationships as kind of a guide and say, okay, my partners were telling me that they love me. And by that time, they were also doing other um, kind of milestones or other things that escalated that are parallel to the relationship I'm in now. Uh, for example, maybe it meant a lot to you in your previous relationships when you reached the point where your partner brought you as their date to a wedding. And with your avoidant partner, maybe, you know, when you first started dating or in the beginning, they went to a wedding alone and then you reached a point where they brought you as their date to a wedding. And it's like, oh, you know, that means a lot to me. By the way, that means a lot to me so much. <laughs> um, so you can look for actions that show you that certain milestones that you've hit in the past where you knew someone loved you, you've reached those milestones as well, as well as certain actions. I don't know, let's say... Um, you and your partner always have like a Thursday night date night and you go to a really nice restaurant and you always do something on Saturday morning and you just feel like there's this action that shows that you guys are always uh, making plans and, and talking about the next week and the next month and, and things like that. What actions can you look for that show that your partner is falling or maybe has already fallen in love with you. So even though they're not saying that, you can hold on to these actions that are actually just as meaningful, despite not hearing the words, I love you. 
that brings me to the second thing, which is, I just think it's really, really important to be patient. <laughs> I know that particularly maybe if you're more anxiously attached, being patient can be quite hard. Um, but I just think it's so important to kind of accept that we all, as people, we were we were essentially raised and socialized in completely different conditions from basically basically everyone else. And even though we can kind of put each other into boxes of you're avoidant or you're uber independent or you're a INFJ or whatever. <laughs> I don't know what all of those are. I, I don't even, I think I took the test once and I don't remember what I am, but Anyway, of course we can put each other into these boxes of like, oh, you're a typical Gemini, you're a typical Scorpio, but at the end of the day, we've all had a completely different set of circumstances that have made us who we are. And so that's why it's so important to be patient with someone's differences because um, there's a saying like, you can't make an avocado ripen faster than it's going to ripen. And it's like, we understand that about a freaking fruit. <laughs> so I think it's, Crit critical to understand that about people as well. You know, if someone's gone their entire life not being great at communication, um, you can't like fight with them, like beat it out of them that they, they are better, better at communicating. You can communicate how much it matters to you um, to hear how someone feels and have them express their feelings to you, but you can't say like, why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you doing this faster? Why aren't you talking about this and stuff? You know, you have to be patient and I know it can be hard, particularly if you're dealing with an avoidant person, the more they feel like they're being rushed, the more they're gonna just kind of shrink <laughs> and just wanna be alone. And so that's why, to go back to the first point that I made, that's why it's so important to kind of reassure yourself you know what, I'm not hearing the feeling of I love you, I'm nervous that they don't love me and I'm feeling it, but their actions show that they probably do or if they don't or they're not sure, like the actions are escalating to a point where I think they could feel it soon or maybe already do. The last thing of course is to express your feelings as long as you're not doing it in a way where you're shaming the other person. I feel like it's important if you're in a relationship with someone who's avoidant, really anyone, but uniquely with an avoidant person, don't get to a point where you are letting their slow pacedness, slow pacedness um, slow you down so much to the point where you feel like you have to be someone else in order to keep that person. You know, if you, if something's frustrating you about the the relationship, communicate that. Don't tell yourself, well, they never talk about anything and sometimes they kind of shut down when I bring things up, so <sighs> I should probably just not say anything. Like, once you're getting to that point in the relationship, that's not a great feeling. You should always communicate how you feel. Just try your best not to shame them. I know that can feel hard sometimes, especially if they're really effing, like getting under your skin. <laughs> Um, it's okay to express how you feel and what you're used to receiving in relationships. It's okay to say things like, oh, you know, in my relationships in the past, um, I, I was always very communicative, communicative with my partner and they were that way back to me. And it just makes me feel, you know, really, really, uh, safe. It just makes me always feel respected and, that it means a lot to me and I like knowing where we stand in a relationship. Like it's okay to just communicate what's important to you, how you feel, um, as long as you're not making the other person feel like they're a bad person or there's something wrong with them for not being exactly like you. Um, so that's pretty much what I wanted to talk about in this video in regards to can avoidance fall in love? Yeah, we can. And it's great being in love. It's great. I love being in love. <laughs> anyway, if you enjoyed this video, if you found it enlightening, um, I would greatly appreciate it if you liked this video. This is a new channel, so um, I want YouTube to push my videos to new people as soon as possible, and liking the video helps. Commenting helps as well. Um, 
If you've got a topic that you want me to talk about, let me know in the description. If you've got a particular unique um, situation with your avoidant and maybe you don't want to comment it, you can feel free to message me on Instagram. And um, if you want me to kind of lend my two cents <laughs> to your very specific situation, um, I'll put my Instagram handle in the description and it should be on the screen right now as well. And that is going to conclude this video. I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.